Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me. For my soul trusts in you. And in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge. Until these calamities have passed by, I will cry out to God Most High. To God who performs all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have dug a pit before me. Into the midst of it they themselves have fallen. My heart is steadfast, O oh God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. Awake, my glory. Awake, lute and harp. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O oh Lord, among the peoples. I will sing to you among the nations. For your mercy reaches under the heavens, and your truth under the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said, See that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go and let it be done just as you believed it would, and his servant was healed at that moment. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. When the evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with the word and healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and bore our diseases. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. 
Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came upon the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You have little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. I think I've pretty much gone through the entire range of human emotions over the past few days and weeks, as I'm sure most of you have as well. And I gotta say, going to the scriptures and finding comfort and guidance from his word is the only thing that has really brought me back to where I want to be. As so many things unfold day by day, moment by moment, and the world is in this bizarre, surreal, unprecedented holding pattern, literally and figuratively. There is so much confusion, so much fear. Fear of the things that they're being told to fear. Fear of things that Jesus did not fear when he touched the rotting flesh of a leper. David, who penned that psalm, Psalm 57, in a cave, running for his life from Saul, where he's praising God and saying, pick up your harp and lyre and worship and sing songs of praise and declare his truth and his, his mercy when he was in a cave. How many times has that story been told and that psalm been read and preached and commentaries written about David's steadfast faith in the midst of trial and tribulation and persecution, where it's fine to talk about David thousands of years ago, fleeing from Saul like some Sunday school felt board Bible story. But that was way back then, right? Could God be calling us to go through those things today? To not just endure them, but praise God in the midst of them? To worship Him in the middle of whatever may come? Is our faith really in the God who is above all things? Who is exalted over all the heavens and His glory is over all the earth? who by his word, the wind and the waves, obey him, and sickness and disease vanish. And people get up and walk, and blind people see. And demons are cast out. Do we trust in that God? Do we follow that Jesus? Do we believe in that gospel? Does it come all the way forward to where we are right here, right now? Is the Bible true, or is it just a bunch of religious mythologies and fairy tales? Do we remain steadfast in Him, no matter what kind of pit or snare is set before us? Do we proclaim His word to the nations even while the nations are swept up in a tidal wave of fear and deception and rebellion, and vowing to come together in some united humanistic effort to save us from the natural processes of evolution? I mean, if everything's a process of evolution, then why do you even need to correct it? What happened to survival of the fittest? funny how that fundamental part of evolutionary theory has been abandoned, even though it's central to the entire concept. A concept now attached to explaining where viruses and killer diseases come from in the first place. It 
It's interesting to note that the idea of quarantine goes all the way back into Bible times. And this is something that everybody knows when they learn about leprosy in the Bible, that they were social outcasts. This horrible disease where your flesh literally rots away, and no one would touch them, and they were forced to go live in isolation. Nobody would come near them, and people would literally cross to the other side of the road so as not to pass by them. Jesus touched them. And the apostles, too, laid their hands on the sick. I mean, how amazing is it that we're... The entire world is suddenly afraid to get within seven feet of each other. Regardless of the where and how of how modern-day diseases have came about. Everyone who claims to believe the Bible has to acknowledge that it was around even in Jesus' time, and there was even laws designed around it in the Old Testament, which Jesus broke. Where is our faith at the end of the day? Where is our hope? What is it that propels us onward? Is it just to get back to business as usual? Is it just to hope for some sort of a rebound? Once we get past this and we can all have a big party and celebrate and make America even greater than it ever was? Second Peter chapter 3 reads, Beloved, I now write to you the second epistle that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire, until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. You, therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, Beware, lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen.